Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here. So I just got home from baseball and uh, about to go to bed because I've got a lot of games tomorrow early in the morning. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about unwritten rules and are unwritten rules, or at least certain unwritten rules, ruining baseball? Um, I've had a lot of discussions yesterday and then again today over this Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, 3-0 Grand Slam, up by 7 in the top of the 8th. I made a video about it yesterday, had a lot of good feedback, and then today just, you know, being at the field a lot today, being around a lot of baseball people, a lot of people are talking about this still. And so... I want to give some more thoughts. Uh, again, I made the video, talked, I gave some of my thoughts, um, but I, I took a couple of notes here. These are just kind of some of the things that uh, I talk with people about today. And so I'd be interested to hear what you all have to say. So we're going to kind of go, I got about like five or six um, thoughts right here. And uh, let's just kind of go through it and give me your thoughts on it below. I'd like to hear what you guys are thinking. Um, because I think some of my thoughts maybe have changed now that I've been away from playing for a little while. You kind of get brainwashed sometimes when you're in the game and you're playing. And uh, I don't know if just maybe some time away has changed my thoughts on some of these things. But uh, let's start off with, you know, there are a lot of unwritten rules in baseball. We've talked about that before. Um, but I, I want to focus on this one that happened with, with Tatis. And again... If you don't know, you can go back and watch my other video, but I, I, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this channel, you already know by now. Uh, real quickly, Tatis is up for the Padres. They're up by seven. It's the top of the eighth. It's bases loaded, 3-0 count. Um, apparently, uh, the manager of the Padres puts a take sign on. Uh, Tatis says he doesn't see it. He swings at a 3-0 pitch. He hits a grand slam. The Rangers take exception to that. Uh, they get mad. They end up throwing at Manny Machado, the next hitter. Uh, after the game, uh, the manager of the Padres kind of calls out, I guess. Uh, Tatis says that he missed the sign. He needs to do a better job of picking up the signs, um, and he'll learn from the experience. And then Tatis has to come out, and then he apologizes for it, says that he'll learn from it. So we go from a guy that leads the league in home runs and, and hit two home runs in a game to, to help your team win, uh, instead of talking about that, we're talking about, you know, unwritten rules and you don't, you know, when you're beating that team by a certain amount, you don't embarrass them, you don't try to score more runs, okay? So that's it in a nutshell. Um, so the big thing, the, the big topic is, you know, should an offense stop trying to score runs if they're up by a lot? Now, what is a lot? Different people will say different things. In this situation, up by seven in the top of the eighth, the Rangers clearly thought that they were up by um that the Padres were up by enough and shouldn't have been swinging 3-0. And the reaction from uh, the Padres and from uh, Tingler is that uh, he felt the same thing, right? He said he put the take on because, you know, the unwritten rule and all this stuff, okay? And if you look around the league, there's been different managers. I saw Joe Girardi said that, he said, no, he didn't, have, he didn't have anything wrong with that swing. He didn't see anything wrong with it, swinging 3-0. He said, you try to put a team away, you can never be careful with a team, and, you know, you score, basically, you swing the bats, and you score as many runs as you can. I've seen other people, I think I saw Renicky come out saying that he shouldn't have swung in that situation. Um, I've seen, it seems like a little bit more, although, you know, Girardi's been around the game for a long time, but... Um, I've actually seen more baseball people, especially older baseball people that played in the big leagues, um, have come out and said, you know, he shouldn't have been swinging there. Um, I've seen newer people, so if you look at Trevor Bauer, you look at Tim Anderson, you look at some of the players that are playing in the game right now, I think most players that I've seen have come out and said, like, there's nothing wrong with this. Like, we should be swinging the bat there. We should not have to take, okay? Um, and so... Here's my, my thought on this. If you look at other sports, let's look at football. In football, you'll see teams maybe like late in the game, you know, run out the clock, right? You just run out the clock. You run the ball. You won't throw the ball. You're up by, I don't know, 28 with a couple of minutes left, right? And, uh, and you know, you're not going to continue to throw, although I've seen the Patriots. I've seen the Patriots throw passes up by 35 with a minute left, okay? Um, but most teams will not do that, okay? But here's the thing, in my opinion. Football, 
There's a clock. And so there comes a point before the clock says zero where the game is over, right? You're up by 35 with a minute left, like the game is over. Or with two minutes left or three minutes left, like the game is over, okay? Now, baseball is different. There is no clock, right? There's no clock. A lot of people say that's the great thing about baseball. There's no time limit. There's no clock. You can play forever, um, except this year you can't play forever. Uh, but, you know, it's nine innings. And so teams have scored 10 runs in an inning, right? It has happened before. And so um, there, there probably is a point, right? What was it? The 30 to 3, was it Rangers, Orioles? Um, a few years back, thirty to three. Like yeah, that game's pro- that game's probably over, even if it's the eighth inning. Um, but most, you know, most games, the team is is still technically in the game, right? Because there's no time limit. The game can't just be called because all oh, the clock hits zero. Okay, one of the cool things about baseball. And so because of that, I feel personally that you should continue to swing the bat. You should continue to try to score runs until the game is over, okay? That's my personal opinion. Now, as a manager or as a coach, right, I think that the the message should be to your offense, if we're just talking offense, the message should be that every at-bat is, is important. Whether we're up by, you know, 10 runs or 20 runs, or even if we're down by 10 or 21 runs, right? That That's my message to the team. I don't want us to throw away at-bats. This is a message that I give to our players all the time, I say we don't throw at bats away. There's been plenty. I've coached plenty of games where we're where we're losing by a lot of runs, um, or we're winning by a lot of runs. And I constantly tell guys, don't throw at bats away, right? Just because we're up a lot, just because we're down a lot, we never just take an at bat for granted or just kind of throw it away because we're not mentally locked in. Oh, it's not an important at bat. It doesn't really matter, right? I think all great hitters, their approach is every at bat matters, no matter the score. And so as, you know, if you're up by a lot, I think the message is that, don't throw up bats away, but but also making sure that you're finishing teams and, and your team understands that just because you may be up by what you think is a lot, that does not mean the game is over. We play all nine innings or all seven innings or six, or depending on how old you are, we finish the game and we have as good of a bats as we can every single time, okay? So you learn how to finish teams and put them away. If you're losing, the message is, we can always come back. Like we never give in, we never give up, we never throw at bats away. And so we continue to to fight, we continue to have good at bats until the game is officially over and we don't have any more at bats, right? So I think that that should be the overall message. I know that's the message that I try to send to our teams, again, whether we're winning by a lot or losing by a lot. Now, the thing I don't like about this uh, case in particular is that instead of celebrating, and I mentioned this earlier, instead of celebrating a great player, that just had a great performance, right? Tatis hit two home runs. He leads the league in home runs. Um, he basically single-handedly carried his team to a victory, basically, pretty much. Um, instead of celebrating that, we have, first when the game ends, we have the manager essentially calling out his young superstar, uh, saying that he needs to you know, do a better job of getting the signs, um, he needs to be aware of the situation. He needs to learn from this experience, right? So he's he's essentially getting scolded <laughs> for um, playing really well, okay, and doing his job essentially. And here's the thing for me with this: I was watching, you know, I, I went back and watched this at bat. In the interview, he the, Tinglish says that you know a lot of guys have the green light, and what that means is that. Uh, when you're 3-0, if you have the green light, that means you're free to swing, okay? There's certain guys that earn that right, right? Usually your power hitters, your better hitters. If it's 3-0, you don't have to look down and see if the coach is going to give a take sign. You're just, you got the green light, you're going to hit, okay? So he does say that he had, that certain, he didn't say he had, he said certain guys on the team have the green light, all right? In my opinion with this whole thing, because some people said to me today, they said, well, you know, he shouldn't be um, ignoring the coach's uh, tell him to take, right? He should be uh, obeying what the coach says or what the manager says. Here's here's my thought on this. I don't know this for sure, but here's my thought. My thought is if guys on that team have a green light, Tatis is one of them that has it, all right? And so Tatis probably has never gotten a 3-0 count and looked down to the third base coach and said, hey, is he going to give me the take, right? Because the guys that have the green light, they know they have the green light. So they're not going to look down. And if you watch the video of the game, he doesn't look down, right? It goes 3-0 and he never, he never even peaks. Now, 
Does he do that because he doesn't want to look down and he doesn't want to see the take? Or does he not look down because he has a green light and he's never given a take? He's not going to be given a take, right? And so again, in the moment, in that he's not thinking, oh, we're up by seven. It's the eighth inning. We've, you know, we kind of got a big lead. You know, are they going to give me the take? He's just focused in on his at bat. And so I don't think it's, you know, some people are like, oh, he, he's ignoring the coach. If he doesn't ever get the green light, or if he doesn't ever get the take sign, he always has the green light, why would he all of a sudden look down there, okay? He probably doesn't even know what the take sign is. If I got the green light, I don't even worry what the take sign is. All right, so that's my thought on the whole uh, picking up manager signs and did he ignore him or should he be more aware and check down there? That's my thoughts on that. And I personally thought, like, I wasn't a big fan of Tenglish saying after the game, like, basically calling him out for knowing that needing to be able to know the signs or look down and see the sign and... Uh, and all that stuff. Like for me, if I know in that situation that I want to put a take on and I do put a take on and I notice that he doesn't look down because, well, he's our best hitter and he has green lights. If I really want him to take that bad, like I think it's my obligation to whistle, yell, hey, Fernando, like take one for us here, right? Like something like that. Uh, I need to do a better job of making sure that I get his attention. Maybe I just, hey, time out here. Wait a second. Hey, come here. We're taking here. Like, right? Like, I, as a manager, I think I need to do a better job. Or as a coach, I need to be, do a better job of that. And then if I, if I don't do that, I think as a manager, if I get asked that question in the post-game press conference, I'm going to put it on myself and say, listen, I need to do a better job of communicating with him. I need to do a better job of making sure that he understands the situation. Um, and I didn't do my job. And that's my fault. Like, I'm not going to throw it on him and say, oh, he needs to do a better job. No, I need to do a better job. I clearly didn't do a good job of relaying what I wanted him to do. Again, even if I give a take sign in that situation, if, I, if I, I'm if i looking at him, I know if he's looking at me and sees the take sign or not. And if I don't see that, I've got to do a better job of relaying that again by whatever method you want to do, whether it's screaming at him, calling time, whatever. So I just thought that it was, I don't know, me personally... Um, especially when it comes to like public statements and post game press conferences and every manager is different. But like for me, I think, and maybe this is an unwritten rule. I don't know, but I always think of the manager, um, taking responsibility and not just blaming players, at least in public. And it's usually, you know, I'm a huge Patriots fan and, um, I'm a huge Bill Belichick fan. I know a lot of people aren't, but one thing about him that I really like is he'll never, you know, he'll get asked questions and there's plenty of situations I'm sure that the players screwed up on, but he'll never call out players in my opinion. Like I just don't hear him call out players really ever. It's always, I've got to do a better job coaching. I've got to do a better job of this. I, 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 it's always about me. Like, and I'm sure it wasn't, it's not always his fault, but he always takes responsibility for it. I think that is important to do as a manager. And so I just think I would have taken a different approach the way I answered that. Um, because now again, you say that and now they're all over Tatis. Now he's got to come out and apologize. And it's just like, I don't know. I just thought it was it kind of became um, kind of a mess when it probably didn't have to be. Now, one question I'm interested in, as a Rangers fan, um, did you think what Tatis did was wrong or just a baseball fan in general? Or is this just, you know, a Major League Baseball thing? Is this just the players and a manager and just kind of inside that Major League bubble or circle? Um I'd be interested. Do any fans have an issue with this? Like, if you're a Rangers fan, um, you know, did did you feel embarrassed that the team lost by whatever eleven runs? I don't even know if that was the final, but were you embarrassed by this? Like, did you did you cry yourself to sleep? Did you not leave the house after this happened because the team? You know, were, were you that much more upset because they lost by eleven instead of seven? You know, like, did did you need psychiatric help now? Is it this big of a deal? I don't know. I just feel like. I feel like the fans probably just moved on and got ready for the next day. Uh, maybe not. Let me know if you, like, was this way out of line by, by Tatis? What are your thoughts on this as a fan? Um, I would be interested to hear that. And this is one of the things that gets me a little bit upset that I don't like about baseball sometimes, especially at the major league level. Um, you know, the whole idea that this is the way the game's been played for a hundred years or a hundred and however many years, 20 years, 130 years, right? And, uh, you know, it's this tradition that we have to keep alive and these unwritten rules, things that weren't even written down, I don't know how many years ago, but like we still have to follow them. And 
Um, I don't know. It's one of the things that I noticed when I got to the major leagues. It was like, you know, and I understand there's not a lot of people that have played in the major leagues. And so maybe when you get there and you play for a while, like you want it to be, you know, the, it's different up there. Okay. And so, you know, it's not, it's not uncommon to hear like, well, that's not how we do it at the big league level. Like we do it this way at the big league level. I understand there's only been a few people that do it. Right. Like it reminds me of like Lou Brown. I love major league and I love Lou Brown, but you know, when Charlie Sheen shows up with no hat and no sleeves and he goes, we wear caps and sleeves at this level, son. Like, it just reminds me of like a major league thing. Like, that's not how we do it at this level, son. This is the major leagues. And so, I don't know, some of the unwritten rules, again, there's so many of them. I just feel like baseball in general makes a big deal about some of these things, some of these rules, some of these unwritten rules um, that need to be followed. And I don't think, I just don't think fans care. I don't think anyone cares except for maybe... The, again, the few players and, and and you know some managers at the major league level. And for this, like, why can't the, why can't the unwritten rule just be? Listen, we're gonna play as hard as we can for nine innings, whether we're up by ten, down by ten, up by twenty, down by twenty. Play as hard as you can. There's gonna be good days. There's gonna be bad days. There's gonna be days where we get the absolute you know what kicked out of us. Um, but that's the way it goes. And you know what? The good thing about baseball is. If you want to get back at the team because they just beat you by 20 runs, chances are pretty good you probably play them tomorrow because you play 160, oh, well, not this year, but usually 162 games in a season and you play the same teams over and over and over and over again. And so if, if you're a little upset, you're a little embarrassed that a team took an absolute whipping on you, tomorrow you can do the same back to them. That should be the unwritten rule. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Uh, thank you to all our patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. Hopefully this, you know, I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the things I've been talking with uh, baseball people about when it comes to unwritten rules. Give me your thoughts below. That's all we have. We'll talk to you later.